How sweet to be an idiot. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. Uh, another episode of the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Man, listen, I cannot thank y'all enough for all the love and support that you've been showing us. You know, uh, you appreciate us and we appreciate y'all listening. Absolutely. Because thank there's you nothing so much. worse than having a podcast that nobody's listening to because technically you're just talking to your fucking self. And nobody would want that. Mm-mm, not at all. So everybody that's been uh, subscribing and ranking on iTunes, we salute you. Uh, everybody that's been listening on SoundCloud, we salute you. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a, a, a special guest in the building. Yes. It's like my homie. This is my homie. This is a very good it's friend like of mine. like my homie. Her name is uh, Paige O'Donnell. Mm-hmm. She works for Revolt Television. Mm-hmm. Yes. That uh, I do. What channel is Revolt on? 291 291 on Time Warner on Cable. Time Warner. Okay. Yeah. Re- Revolt is like Obamacare. <laughs> oh, no. You know it's out there. Not a lot of people have it. They should. <laughs> <laughs> but, come on. Come but on. I, I like, like to think more people have it. I feel like Revolt is like HPV. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like everybody's got it. Everybody's it's just you can't it. see it ever. Oh my god! <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like you know it's there somewhere, but you look for it. Like I will see this shit, man. <laughs> but you, you and VJ gonna... on Revolt, right? I mean, we're not VJs. We're hosts. Hosts? We're culture editors. Oh, know? that's the new word for it? They don't say VJs no more? Nah, because we're not just VJs. We all do, like, news. I'll do, like, interviews, all that stuff. So, okay. I, I Paige is swagged VJ. out right now. I just want to say the way she's dressed. I know this is a podcast, but, you know, sometimes we put the videos up. Doesn't she look like she's doing one of those uh, Russian twerking videos? She's got her Carmine Sixes no. on. Someone, a, a lady on the train asked me what my Nito sneakers were today. Nito? Uh, Nito. Like, they're Nito. Neat. Neato. She was like, hey, what are those Neato sneakers you got oh, on there? She wanted and me. I had to explain. She was a hipster? No, nah, she was just like a white elderly woman. Oh, uh, <laughs> she loved it. Neato. I figured she was she a said. hipster or an old white lady. And That's how I met Paige. Right. I met Paige. She, go, she goes to Penn State University still. Mm-hmm. Right. When I met her, she was doing a college. Were you a Sandusky victim? I was not. Sandusky I worked, not I like worked for him, but. He doesn't. No. No. Were you she offended? Wait, what? <laughs> she heard the screen. What? I didn't yes, hear the screen. You were responsible? No. No, I know. I know That's I how knew. you can afford these six. She put the do not disturb sign on Sandusky's door. <laughs> no. Did he ever no. say to you, hey, I'm going to be in the showers for a little bit. Just keep these doors closed. No. No, I didn't interact with him like that. Like, I was, I worked for the recruitment team. So you the brought the team. boys in. No, I didn't bring them. <laughs> I, I brought the grown men who are playing football. Yeah, and, all right. In hindsight, did you look back and say he was a monster? Like, did you ever? You couldn't tell anything. In no. hindsight. In hindsight. In oh. hindsight. <laughs> poor, poor, poor choice of words. No, I mean he's a little off. Everyone knew that he's a little off, but you would never. I mean, was he's he a nice off guy. or old? Because he was like a hundred years he's old. He's old and off. I mean, both. I guess. Yeah, I guess when not, you're thinking about sodomizing like little boys all day. On. Yeah, it takes a toll on your mental. Yeah, you could get a little off. Oh, my gosh. But you had a radio show called yeah. Front Page Radio Show at Penn State. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I did. And Hip-hop she interviewed me, and we've been, like, besties ever since. And this is true. I see you guys hanging out a lot. And she used to intern at uh, Power 105. Power 105. And it is a friendship friendship. I will say this. is At first, I assumed, you know, attractive lady, Charlemagne, you were trying to maybe get something extra besides an internship. I fuck every woman in my life. Charlamagne, I assume and I you were trying it. to put the in an in internship. Oh no. oh no! I was put it. I was trying to put it in the internship. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I ain't fucked interns in a long time. Let me tell you, I used to fuck interns all the time. <laughs> when I used to work for Wendy, forget it. Oh my god! In but you guys understand when I worked for Wendy, I was. Let me see. That was two thousand six. I was like twenty five. So the oh, interns wow. were like. 2021, okay. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh my God, I fucked so many of those interns. And it was, it, were they down with it? Was it like, yeah, I wasn't even trying. I wasn't, that was not my intention because you got to think, I was still okay. an intern. Okay, all right. No, no, Charlamagne. I was still an intern technically because I worked with Wendy for a year and a half for yeah. free. So I was just trying to earn my keep. You know what I'm saying? I was trying to earn my spot. I wasn't thinking about getting no pussy. But just lo and behold, a lot of the girls that were It just there, happened to also be there. Yes, they wanted to <laughs> fuck me. Who am really? I to turn down pussy? Charlamagne does this thing where we'll be out and be like, it's not my fault. Like, women, I'll just be having a normal conversation and they fall in love and they just want me. In fact, True. I think you said that the first time I interviewed you, the first time I interviewed you at Penn State, he's like, yeah, I don't be trying. It's just girls. He's trying. It's just he girls. He just says inspirational quotes 24-7 yeah. to these women. It's not my fault, me and my You just sell the dream all <laughs> the time. Listen, it's true. Like, because I really, you know, I'm going to tell you the problem. I really do mean well when I'm talking uh, to people in general. 
Okay. So if somebody comes to me and they're having a conversation with me, I'm having a conversation with them. I'm trying to empower them, enlighten them, hoping I can learn something from them as yeah. well as they learn something from me. And it's just like I call it the pastor effect. Why do you think pastors get so much pussy? I didn't. I didn't know that. My, they do get I'm pussy. Catholic. Thought, my pastors don't. But, oh, what the fuck? Yeah. They, <laughs> I mean, but it's the same thing. They sit there. They nurture these little boys. They talk to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? They tell them they can be everything they want in life. Real quick. Uh, was that a prerequisite for your job with Sandusky, the fact that you had worked in a church already? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't work in a church. I've attended Listen, a church. I've been getting these boys fucked for years. <laughs> <laughs> All right? Let me work for you. You're going to get the tightest hineys in oh, Pennsylvania. No. I know where all the young tenders are, Mr. Sandusky. <laughs> <laughs> awful. 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 But Paige is a great, great individual. Mm-hmm. And I'm proud to see her go from being an intern and now having a job at Revolt. Yeah. And I just want to keep her seat, keep, continue to see her keep growing. Oh, and thanks, you seem Char. to be continuing to grow. Yeah, I mean, I like my job. I love what I do. If you like your job, it doesn't feel like work, so it's always fun to do, and it's easy to succeed in it. That is true. Yeah. I bet you Sandusky felt the same way. Oh my gosh! I bet you Sandusky's yeah. so pissed off right now. He yeah. had a man. He had a manufacture. He had a warehouse full of young boys. Yeah. He was it bringing was little warehouse. young boys off the assembly line. Think about it. What? And then he liked the young black boys, right? So uh, it, it what wasn't just young attracts black boys. more than young black boys than football and sports and athletics? So you're promising them just wow. this, oh, you know, I can teach you how to get to the NFL, yada, yada, yada. Come on, man. It wasn't, it was you like a charity was one. I don't think that was a hustle. One, it was not just young little black boys. It was, it was a variety of children from what I have understood from it. It wasn't yeah. just like a targeted demographic of little boys. I like how we're defending him. Like he wasn't I'm a racist. I'm not defending him. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> he was open minded with racist, his boy fucking, right? honestly. Like this guy. Um, no, I mean. Didn't have a really discriminatory it, but... bone in his body. <laughs> okay. Sandusky. <laughs> Now, we're talking about topics today, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's just, I think we need to chop it up on some topics. We haven't really addressed the news in the, in the last, I don't know. Because there ain't shit few, going on. Well, here's some shit that happened. What? So, I don't know if you saw Daily News. Leonardo DiCaprio was hooking up with some girl, at least kissing some girl in the club. Mm-hmm. Right? Is he married? Cans. No, he's not married. No, he's not married. But, uh, and apparently the husband of this girl that he was kissing on just killed himself. And he, they said he did it because Leonardo DiCaprio fucked his girl. I can see why that would totally drive you crazy. Why? Why? Leonardo DiCaprio fucks your wife? If Is that not the biggest compliment it's, yeah. it's a, that you could no, get as a man? There's yeah. a few things that you're like, what the fuck? You don't want Leonardo DiCaprio fucking your wife. You don't want Denzel <laughs> fucking your wife. You don't want Channing Tatum fucking your wife. <laughs> Ryan Gosling. Any of these sex symbols Let me ask you that, know, that every we know every girl wants. But wouldn't you rather all those guys, if somebody had to fuck your wife, wouldn't you rather it was all those guys instead of wax? <laughs> this is true. Like, if I had to choose someone to fuck my wife, it nah. would be a slender Leonardo DiCaprio, somebody who's going to hold her at the edge of a boat. But- let's be clear. I wouldn't want, no- <laughs> you know I mean? let's be clear. I wouldn't want nobody fucking my wife. Absolutely. But yeah. especially not somebody I have to see all the time. That's Think about true. it. You go in fucking that's stores. Fun. You see him on the cover of magazines. Uh, you see him fun. all over TV. You can't go see no Leo movie for the rest of your life. I can't even watch Wall Street no more. You can't watch <laughs> TNT ever. You definitely can't watch <laughs> Titanic's <laughs> always on. Ever. Yo, that is so funny though. But Ima- you- maybe that's what killed him. Like, what if that's what killed him? Like, he he got over it, but he just couldn't stop seeing commercials. Oh I can't get this motherfucker god. out of my head. Oh my god! What if she lied to him and said all we did was kiss? You lying bitch! You're not gonna tell me all you did was kiss Leonardo DiCaprio. Maybe don't you think though? Like in my experience, I feel like it's always the people that are put on the highest pedestals that end up being like the wackest in bed anyway. It doesn't so wouldn't you rather is, be? But it's, we're not even thinking that he put work in. We're you just thinking the fact just that he made out did with her? it. I just here's my feeling. No this way. is this is what I really feel like the the biggest victim here is Leonardo DiCaprio. Why? Because you know when a boxer kills somebody in the ring? Yes. That's what he's going through every time he steps back in the nightclub. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like every girl he hits on in the nightclub, he's shell shocked. You know, he's like he's gotta ask, fuck, do you, you gotta you you, have, you sure you don't have a man? You sure there's nobody that really It's not shit. his fault though. But you think that's not on your conscience, the fact that your dick killed a man? But it didn't directly <laughs> he, he didn't wrap his dick around his neck and choke him. Like he his wrapped dick his dick actually... around his girl's neck and that choked him. I guarantee you any amount of money, Leo is sitting around laughing. And I don't mean I don't mean you laughing. No, 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 no. I don't mean laughing on some oh shit that's funny, but on some holy shit, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I fucked this bitch and he killed himself. Like ego, like, there's a little and, and, ego. And then he goes, then he goes, oh, that's fucked up, man. That's bad. 
But then he goes, yo, she killed him. Himself, I, this girl. I mean, they're probably going to come out with like a statement that's like, oh, he was very depressed and it wasn't his fault. Get the fuck out of here. I, I, I feel like the... it wouldn't be on my contract. That's like something that's very indirect. All jokes aside, I wouldn't be depressed if somebody killed themselves because I fucked their girl. You would look at that as a, as the ultimate, like, yeah, he hasn't won an Oscar. But that's no. what he's saying to George Clooney and them when no. they meet up. Yo, y'all got Oscars. I got bodies. Yeah, I got bodies. <laughs> Actual bodies. <laughs> I, I honestly would be thinking, he's, he's dumbass. And then I would turn Chris Brown. These hoes ain't loyal. Up, I'd be like, "Yo, why the fuck? You should. You, don't you hear the song? You need to listen dumbass? to your pop music, you dumb motherfucker. The fuck! I fucked your girl. There ain't no reason to kill yourself. You know what you do? Yeah. You break up with the chick. You well, break up with the chick. That's what this chick said. Yeah. The chick said they were getting divorced. She was like, it, "The divorce was eight months in, and yada yada yada." Here's another thing. She's thirty-two. How old is he? I don't know how old he. Oh, Leonardo. Yeah. Well, that don't matter. Oh, that's what drove him crazy. It drove him crazy that. She, they, they were getting a divorce. He probably wanted her back all of this time. Yeah. Then you find out your woman is in cons fucking Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, she's gone forever, though. Oh, yeah, there's no coming <laughs> there's back. There's no there's coming no back. Coming. <laughs> you don't fuck Leo and go, you know what? I need to get back with my <laughs> husband. Exactly. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> Who are you, man? I miss that broke dude that get used to fuck, fuck me. What? I'm out here sucking Leonardo DiCaprio dick. You think I'm going to come back to yours? <laughs> I've upgraded tremendously, sir. And that's the only thing you can do is hate and say, oh, he don't got no fucking Oscar. Exactly. I almost feel bad for her though. Like, what do you do after that? Like, you fuck Leonardo. Yeah. What do you do after that? You're 32. You're lucky you got to fuck Leo. You go fuck somebody with an Oscar. That's what you do. You go fuck Matthew McConaughey. Listen. (laughs) (laughs) Keep improving the roster. (laughs) That's what you do. You go fuck somebody with a goddamn Oscar. (laughs) Oh fuck! That is hilarious. That that's the one thing on Leo. Like, like in every fight with his girl, that's the shit that comes up. You know, it don't matter what it is, and you know that probably stings. Like the second she's like, "Well, that's why you don't got sh- you don't got a fucking Oscar." You know, he sits there, starts grinding his teeth like Wolf of Wall Street. You think it bothers him? Son, it has to. It bothers bother. me, and I'm just a fan. Like I feel like he deserves one. You know what's funny? This is a good argument, right? Because I was listening to my man Robin Lundberg on ESPN, and he's a LeBron James lover. Okay, like a lover, right? And for whatever reason, when he's ever when he's trying to justify it, this morning he goes. We're going to just rip up LeBron's two and three in the finals. Let's throw that out. Wait, what does that mean? Because he's two and three in the finals. Oh, okay. So, okay, he, okay. so he goes, let's rip that up and throw that out. Because that's just the argument people use to say that LeBron's not as good as Jordan. Nobody wants to take into consideration that he went to the finals at 21 with the Cleveland Cavaliers. I'm like, when do we start applauding people for just getting there? More if that's than- the case, Leonardo's the greatest actor of all time. He's been there. He's been nominated a few times. Yeah. If that's also the case, we could just rip shit out. Sandusky was a great football coach. With, <laughs> <It's> fine. <laughs> besides, mine is fucking those boys. <laughs> exactly. And if you honestly, if you really look at his body of work, besides fucking boys for yeah. a long time, great Superb. defense. Penn State had a great defense. We actually did have a really good defense. Don't for a you long time. support this motherfucker? <laughs> I'm just saying. So is Leonardo DiCaprio not one of the greatest actors of all time just because he doesn't have an Oscar? That that is an excellent question because what makes someone a great actor? I think it's. I think it's when a movie comes out, you don't even think the movie's interesting, but you go, you know what? You go and see it. I fuck with this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I have that with Denzel and Leo and now Matthew McConaughey. Tom Hanks, too. Oh, uh, I love Tom Hanks, man. (laughs) Tom Hanks is one of the most underrated actors of all time. Why do you love love him? What what is it about Tom Hanks? Think about all the different characters he can play. Castaway is nothing like Forrest Gump. You understand what I'm saying? Like, how can you not like Tom Hanks? The character he played in Big. Is nothing like I thought. Forrest Castaway Gump was just or Castaway. like Island Philadelphia. So what you think diversity? Philadelphia is another best. one. I don't think none of his characters are the same. Denzel, you get a lot of Denzel in every character because he's a boss. That's My, why. But I like that. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, but then no, nah, I don't like. But but I like Denzel when he does Malcolm X, <clears throat> when he does Training Day. People that are nothing like him to me. So we have different schools of thought on acting. Okay. You like a uh, variety. You like an actor that can take on a bunch of different roles. That's what acting is. See, me personally, I like an actor that cultivates cultivates a. Cultivates? Cultivates? I don't know what I'm Cultivates. I I, you know, I got a little ahead of myself with that word. Okay. All right. Uh, who cultivates a character and then puts that in a bunch of times. Like, I don't mind if Pacino's Pacino in every movie. I fuck with that character Pacino made. Yeah. They have, like, a persona about them. And you know they're going to bring it to the movie if yeah. they're in it. No, I like personas. Don't get me wrong. But I like people that can show range. That's you like what... Johnny Depp? No. Hell no. Johnny <laughs> Depp played the same character 20 times. 
Especially when he does it every. Version. I can't tell what Tim Burton movie he does with Johnny Depp. <laughs> this shit is like one long fucking movie. Willie Lo- Willie Wonka looks just like Edward Scissorhands. Uh, that's oh, funny. Gosh. All right. Yeah, I don't like Johnny Depp's cool, but nah, he's he's the same person all the time. So who's your favorite? I would probably say Tom Hanks. Is your favorite, favorite actor? actor? I would say Tom Hanks is probably my favorite no. actor, yo. Paige? I don't know. I mean, I guess Denzel for me, that's, I mean, that's like a cop out. Everyone says that, but I don't know. I like that he brings the same thing to every movie. I'm okay with that. But hold on. That's the same. People give Kevin Hart flack for that. They say Kevin Hart is the same character in every movie, say but what you were we saying applaud to me. Denzel. Say what you were saying to me about Kevin Hart. You, you brought up a really good point about Kev earlier this week when we were talking about, about his oh, success. Oh, and I was saying that uh, I feel like black comedians feel threatened by Kevin Not Hart. Not only black comedians. I would say comedians, comedians in, in general. general. Yeah. Because Kev has no issues. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is Kev has no drug problems. Kev has no negative vices. Like, it's easy to relate to somebody, if somebody's great, right? Like, I'm just going to use DMX, for example. DMX was amazing, like, as far as a musician. He yeah. sold, you know, ten, he went platinum a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah. He sold a lot of records. He made a lot of money. But he was always relatable to the streets of because the he struggle. smoked crack. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So people always felt like they could relate to him on that level because they're like, even though he's great, he has this major issue that we all know one day he's going to self-destruct. So it won't last for long. So, so you're saying... We're more comfortable when we know someone's somebody's gonna fall off. Is there. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, he's hot now. Yeah, but he's gonna be with me in a he's little bit. Fall, exactly. Either I'm gonna, either I'm gonna surpass right. him, or he's gonna fall off. It's so funny. Liking somebody has a lot to do with where you position yourself with them. But Joy there's me. also a lot of people that probably can relate to Kevin because they don't have vices like that. You know what I mean? Like I don't do drugs. I don't smoke crack. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel comfortable liking him because. I know he might like the same shit as I do. I think I think that there's that, and I also think that Kev is not threatening. No, I like, mean he's small. He's, so he's small, which is so huge because he's small and he's petite small. Yeah. You know, he's not just short; he's petite small to the point where I could watch a movie, my girl could be dying laughing. She could say, "Kevin Hart is so funny; he's the most hilarious." And and no part of me be like, "Is this chick trying to fuck Kevin Hart?" He will put her to bed. But I, I also was called a small though. We, and you said that, but not Kevin is shockingly small. Yeah. That's most superstars. Kevin nah. Big Boy from Out, on Outcast are like the same size. What about him and Duval? What is their like Duval size towers of? over yeah. Kevin. Yeah. No, <laughs> Duval towers. No, he does Duval looks They're beyond like the same height. Kev. Yes. Kev looks like a, like a maybe a middle schooler. I would say that's how tall he is. I think Kevin is five feet two inches tall. Which is a good, I think it works toward to his benefit. Yeah, you know how I mean, much hate, I if, if my girl's laughing at a dude that's my size and good uh-huh. looking, I shut that. I'm like, yo, he's not, like, this, this dude ain't that funny. Like, why are you fucking laughing so much? Like, what's, what, you, you silly? You goofy? What's your problem? That is true, though, because I see young dudes, like, I see, like, Meek Mill always calls Kev little homie. And I think it's a part of you that makes you still feel secure as long as you can son a person or keep him, like, a little homie. Because you're not sunning him for him. You're Like you said, you're sunning for you. Yeah, yeah, You yeah, know yeah. that Kev is way bigger than, bigger than Meek Mills. Yeah. Who the fuck is Meek Mills to call Kev little homie? Yeah. Yeah. That's but, my guy, though. Shout out to Meek. Salute to Meek. But still, who the fuck well, is... they're from the same hood, though, but I don't know. I guess it's, I guess it's not literal. He's just... It's a play on words because he is so small. Oh, like real, real talk. Uh, actually, you know what? This is... That might not be Meek because Kev used to go by Lil Kev early in his comedy career. And yeah. if Meek is from Philly, Philly. Yeah, 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 he yeah. probably would know. Like, all the comedians that I know him from Philly... Call him Lil, Lil Kev. Kev. Yeah. Okay, that so could that be it. so it might not even be a son in thing. That could be it. But it's true though. He has no vices. Like Richard Pryor had you know his pain mom. with his mom and his his childhood. Plus he was on drugs. He was he, sucking dicks. Well, that happened once. You know, but it's all it's a vice. I love how black Just dudes once. defend this shit. Just one. <laughs> it's, it's only black people that go, yo, he sucked one dick. He sucked one as if that Let's would Let's tear it up. You know why I respect Pryor? I'm gonna tell you why I respect Pryor. He admitted to sucking that dick. And he owned that dick. He owned that dick talk. Dick sex. <laughs> he owned sucking that goddamn dick. This is the thing about sucking dick. Not just sucking dick with anything. All right. If you own it, it has no effect on it. Eight you. mile that shit. That's you got like eight mile, eight mile Eminem and eight dick. mile it, man. Once you get, once you tell somebody everything that you've done, they can't use it against you. That's Absolutely. why I tell everybody, live your truth, because when you live your truth, nobody can use it against you. This is true. That's true. But if you're, I mean, if you're if ashamed you're of it and you try and own it, I feel like that's something that could come back and bite you. Why would you be ashamed of sucking a dick? Especially if you made the person come. I mean, <laughs> females, I feel like, don't have to be unless it's... <laughs> 
Hold on. Hold on. It's Hold fine. On. The only thing, as long the only thing you should be ashamed of if he didn't bust if in you your don't mouth. make him come. That's fucking hysterical. Is, am I lying? <laughs> what if that was the thing you were carrying around your whole life? Like, you're like, I'm really embarrassed about this dick suck. And everybody's like, listen, it's okay. You had an experience. Whatever. No, 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 no. Did he finish? I couldn't get him to <laughs> nut, dog. Yo. I was working. you goddamn right. My throat was sore for days. I had tonsillitis. Motherfucker. Uh-huh. Listen, fellas, try that on a girl. You know how girls always give us flack because we don't make them come? Yeah. Try that on a girl. Dude, I think. Not coming. Honestly, how can have you, you, try you ever been that? with a guy who didn't come? Mm-mm. No. Be honest with us. No, I mean. Went like having sex like when I was younger, maybe, but not like from giving head. No, no, no. But having sex when you're younger. <laughs> oh, okay. you've been a beast at giving head. <laughs> <laughs> what? She came wow. up in that Sandusky no, clinic. <laughs> I learned from Jerry. Come on Jerry. in here. Come on in here. If you can make an eight year old come, you can oh. make anybody come. Oh my come. gosh, stop. No. <laughs> Awful. Awful. Oh, shit, Awful. No, I feel like that's like a normal thing. Like when you're younger and you have sex, like at first no one comes because everyone's scared. But okay. like, no, I mean. Yeah, I don't know, but I, I don't know if that's a that's a normal of, we, occurrence. We don't come out of fear. What? You said everybody's scared. <laughs> nah, we not come. like the first time you have sex. Like it's like scary and like you're nervous. I didn't like the first time I had sex. Wait, I told you the story before. No, like, no, that's right, that's right, that's right. The first right. several times I I had sex, I didn't nut. I didn't nut. Several, that's this a little strange. Girl, but you were you were because you were scared. I, and it wasn't because <laughs> I was scared. I just didn't know what nothing was. I was just fucking the fuck. But doesn't it just happen? Like, it doesn't matter if you know what it is. It, it just, just happens. Happen for me. It happened when I fucked that white girl though. She was riding my dick. I busted off and I told y'all this last week. Yeah, yeah. Vinny was hit. That's what's up, man. But yeah, fellas, trust me. Shout out don't to white women. Come. <laughs> shout out to white women Look doing that white work. Queens, that's right. Putting you know in that saying? work. Black don't. chicks lazy, <laughs> not working no, for that nut. No you know comment. what I mean? No they just comment. up there tapping their head, tapping their weave. Are you gonna oh come yet, Charlemagne? <laughs> come on, God, it's hot. Walked on a dirt you road lucky, to get over should, here. You should be lucky you getting this pussy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You want me to make you nut too? <laughs> make you feel guilty about it? <laughs> I gave you the pussy, but it's my job to make you nut too. God, can you bike me home? <laughs> Has that happened to you? Have you like not came with a girl before? Um, That's what you said. He yeah, did. on purpose. On purpose? Yeah, it how do you do, how do you a, stop it? It's a total mind. I feel like you can't your stop mind. It. When the guy didn't come with you, did, wasn't part of you like, oh fuck, I think I really love him. No, but I would probably be deeply offended if it happened. There now. you go. And but you're offended, but you're gonna get that nut. <laughs> when <laughs> when you when, is that what you're saying? Dude, this I swear, my buddy didn't come with this girl that I we went to college together, mm-hmm. and they ended up being in a long distance relationship because she wanted that nut. It's the ultimate mm. nag. No. It is. We've read the game by Neil Strauss. It's the ultimate Absolutely. nag. But my thing is, I'm stubborn. So, like, if that doesn't happen, I'm like, all right, then. You say nah. that, and then a week later, you're like, did this motherfucker really not? You're going to look at your vagina, I'm like, is there some shit fucked yep. up down here? Yep. How'd that go? What? My <laughs> vagina? You just look at it like, what the fuck? And you start thinking shit is wrong with you, so then you go and get that nut so you can feel good about your vagina. Again. But if you're doing the same thing that you've done with someone else, and it had happened, then I feel like- Give us examples. I'm not, no, I can't I mean, get- <laughs> Detailed. I don't know what you mean. I'm just saying, like, if you have a technique- Say all What's right, and you, you. I don't, I'm not gonna speak on my What's technique. Your fatality? No, not talking What's your fatality? <laughs> What's your, what is fatality, your fatality? No. Yo, come on, bitch. What is? Um, what do you go I to? I don't know if I have a technique. Let me like, ask you. Do you say, um, bend over and say, hut, hut, <laughs> hike? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's what I say. And say, okay, say I do that every time. No, no, what is what is your move? I think Charlotte makes um, a good question. I don't know if I basket have a weave. move. Here's a, What's the basket weave? The basket weave? weave? No, the basket weave, yeah. That's like, there you go. When oh, you that's the what that's called? Oh, yeah. The basket weave. Technique. The Indian burn, we would call that. I mean, there you go. The Indian burn? You know when someone grabs your wrist and they do the Indian oh. burn? You got to have a nice size dick for a girl to do that, though, because it takes two hands. Yeah. So. You gotta. It's got to be summer for Charlemagne for you to do that. Yeah. yeah. Eight inches in the summer. To be a little swollen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I mean, I guess I do that. I don't know. I don't I don't do have, like, like, a game plan when I go in. I'm, like, a person that, like, feels it out however I feel. You're an abstract fucker. Yeah. I mean, Freestyle fucker. Improv. Yeah. Improv. MCB. Because you, you can't fuck every person dick. the same. That's not a thing. Why not? Because it's, people are different. People are different. Question. Charlemagne has this theory that he wants to be remembered when he's fucking. Like, he has right. this fear, like, like... Like, if you have sex with Charlamagne, you're not going to forget this you know, shit. You're going to leave an imprint? I'm going to yes. do what I got to do. I'll take a lighter, burn your ass, 
something. What you mean? Oh, you mean like scar them, something. like physically it's be something scar? That you no, mean, like holy like, shit. He, he always says he things like he'll put the water in a sink and put push her head in the sink, sink, roll it up, hit it from I've the back. I've heard that you've told me that before. Call that the inception. But what if someone has done that to her before? Then you won't, it won't be. I mean, of course they are because I talk about it all the time. So of course they're stealing my moves. I got the Django. The Django's amazing. What's the Django? Because I like uh, you know bondage and shit like that. So the, Django. The, the Django is when you like take a rope and you tie somebody's legs and then you tie their wrist together mm-hmm. and then you're hitting her from the back. You're whipping that pussy from the back. Okay. Yeah. Call okay. That the Django. All right. Bondage scares me. Really? Not for the younger, not for me. No, not for me. But I'm saying I feel like it should scare dudes more than anything. Why? Like girls using Why? bondage on you because girls are crazy. It gotta be a girl. Girls you are trust. so crazy. I guess, but a I feel like you, you never really know. But you're not gonna hurt us. That's true. Yeah, but you might put it on Instagram though. You look awful <laughs> stupid with a goddamn <laughs> tied that's up with an I'm apple saying, in your you mouth. You guys especially <laughs> like a fucking rotisserie pig. Exactly. You guys more so than me. Like I would be afraid if I was in your position. You know. Of you guys, what you would do? To you us. no, you oh. too. Like because you guys have cl- other claims of fame. You know, and people know who you are. I would be afraid of crazy so girls saying, just like trying to like get theirs and like hold on, hold use on. that against you so or what something. What you're trying to say is that. Since Revolt is on channel 3474, <laughs> nobody's going to know that you are tied up like Django and somebody was whipping nobody's that pussy from the back. page. No, what is that? Is that page from Revolt? <laughs> that's some shit you're not going to hear. But as Wait, I'm, I'm that saying, that? like, people don't recognize me in the street like that. Not yet. Not yet. Your time will come. But I'm saying I, that's why I feel like you guys would be more afraid of that. As soon thing. as Tom Warner starts carrying Revolt. They, we do. Oh, <laughs> they do. Yes. It's going to put it on, on three digits. Comcast and Time Warner Cable carry us. So who doesn't? I mean, I guess everybody else. That okay, <laughs> when everybody else that's not Time Warner and Comcast starts carrying Revolt, Paige is on. If Jennifer Lopez hadn't fucking uh, bid more money than Diddy on Fuse. You would have been there. On few, well, I yeah. mean, I don't really know what would have happened with that if it just would have like bought the audience like and brought it into. The, I don't really know, but I can't speak on it because I. I don't I mind no being on like World Star Instagram for sex as long as it's not shrinking. Yeah, but it's different for you. Yeah, and then it's, it becomes like a cool thing. Yeah, like, as long as my dick is fully erect <laughs> and I'm not like getting my ass eaten, which I enjoy. Uh, World Star's like Yelp for dick. I feel like. Yelp for dick. It's a review on the <laughs> Seriously, it's like a cosign. I would I would like you to end see up on World Star. I would like to see a sex tape just for the comments. The comments yeah. are so fucking funny, the things that people leave. People are just All so I ratchet people- though. Go ahead, what'd you say? I said people are ratchet though. Like I interviewed him in college and like this is like one of the earliest interviews I'd done with my radio show and people are like, Oh, I'm gonna pee on your butt and like I bet he I bet he like peed in her butt. Like why is that always <laughs> the go to comment? I don't understand. I just love dudes because dudes try to act tough about gay shit. Like if there was a video where you're fucking somebody, you could be like, Yo, the dick on Charlemagne's vein ain't shit. It'd be like no blood going to the tip yeah. of his dick in that uh, little ass vein. Uh, yo, his, <laughs> dick, his dick is discolored like his face. Yeah, exactly. The like, fuck you studying my dick exactly. so hard they for, They study yo. the fuck out of they the really dick, do. dude. And then comment, but act like they're not looking at the dick. Listen, all I want people to say is, God damn. I want to look at the comments and be like, whoa. Like, yo, you see that dick? <laughs> you want that from guys, too? Marks. You want, you want yeah, to comment from guys, Listen, too? Whoever. Yeah. Fine. I want to comment like, yo, did you see her face wince? <laughs> Listen, when I watch the R. Kelly tape, the R. Kelly tape gets a bad rap. I've never seen the R. Kelly sex tape. People act like only a little girl was on there, okay? That wasn't even the last scene. The last scene <laughs> was actually you know, like every this scene. fat ass, and he was just pouring baby oil on her and just slapping it. Like, he was just in awe of this fat ass. That was the last scene. But the greatest scene on there is where I learned to eat ass when he had the girl in a swivel chair that with wheels spread. on it, and he kept rolling her back and forth to his tongue and putting his face buried in her ass, and, like, a Grammy was sitting there. That <laughs> Grammy was there. But I'm saying all that to say, when I watched that video, I was just saying to myself, Holy shit, R. Kelly's a fucking beast. R. Kelly is the champ. Do you like, think when Leonardo DiCaprio gets his Oscar, he's only going to do it with his Oscar in the room? Oh, my God. Oh <laughs> Eat my ass God. with his Oscar next to him. But those are the comments you want. You want people to be like, wow. Yeah, that you're is in crazy. all of your sex game. Okay, I understand that. Yeah, I guess if you're lame in bed, it's a kind of a bad, you know. I mean, I feel like if you're look. lame in bed, you're not going to make a sex tape and put it out. It's not. No well, one people, wants to watch a lame sex tape. People will put out a sex tape if it's Kim Kardashian sex tape was lame as fuck. By I mean, the way, but it was Kim Kardashian and her. Kim was so. Did you whack. think it was lame? I didn't think it was that she lame. She was whack as fuck. I just thought Ray J's dick was fucking. I never watched the whole thing, but you I like mean, Ray J's penis? Yeah, I would like it to be on me. Yeah, I have enough girls. I'd like to have Ray J. What? 
Have enough girth. I think you you don't think it had girth because it was so long. I'm just comparing it to my dick. His, man, get that just seems fuck. dangerous. My dog, my you, girth. Is your dick as long as his dick? I got girth, dog. There's, is his dick? Nah, is it's your not, dick? Mine's not as long. God, his dick look like a. Fucking my dick is very well proportioned. My dick looks like me. It's symmetrically. It looks very like nice. me. <laughs> it's a nice length, nice width. Eight inches, about two and a half girth. Okay. Maybe three. Three inches girth. That's yeah. a lot, Charlamagne. What do you want me to say? Sorry. It happens. It's a lot, Charlamagne. <laughs> Give me another topic. You it's about, a lot, You were talking about dicks. Oh, you want, okay. Uh, no, I was talking about dicks. Why? All right. LeBron Taylor is a free agent. <laughs> <laughs> LeBron has like, been on the market for a long time. <laughs> LeBron is going to whatever city got Bosley's hair treatment for men. <laughs> I don't think LeBron's what, leaving Miami. I think he is. Why? I think LeBron is going to leave Miami because he doesn't have faith in D. Wade anymore. If LeBron leaves Miami, he doesn't have faith in himself. It has Ooh. nothing to do with D. Wade. It has nothing to do with Chris Bosh. Well, I've think- been to the finals four times with those guys. Chris Bosh is still young, very young. D. Wade is still young. His body's just beat up. His you body's bring, beat up. You He's bring done. in more pieces, you can still win championships. You can't afford more pieces. Yeah. If he, he can't always run from your problems either, LeBron. But we know that that's what he does. So yeah. and that's why he's not one of the greatest of all time to me. And that's fine. And I'm with you on that. Mm-hmm. I think I think he's one of the greatest of all. Well, time. I don't think he's the, the greatest. greatest. Yeah. yeah, he's not one of the greatest yet. He could be one of the greatest, but the ver- the jury's still out. He's still building his resume, people. Okay, fair. I I won't argue with you on that. Because Is he the greatest player of this era? Absolutely, hands down. There you go. But when we start bringing in players from other eras, no. Okay. That's what, you can't even go back an era and not question LeBron. I think he's top fifty. I think he's top 25. I think he's top 10. Top 50 ever? Ever. I think he's top 10 ever. Nah. Yeah, the thing about LeBron is everybody knows who he is, and that's like a big part of... The celebrity, unfortunately, is a big part of no, being... No, it's not. It is, though. It no. is, though. What do you mean everybody not knows in who sports. he is? In what? sports, yeah, that, but that's what everyone says. They're like, oh, sports are great because it's only solely based off your talent. Yes. But we all know it's not just based off your talent. It is. No, it's not. It's it all It's all based. celebrity. The, the NBA, is a lot of it feeds into celebrity, like there's the not, fans and everything. Not what one, does that mean? I'm there, confused. There's only, okay, here's the thing. If LeBron is the greatest of all time, but no one thinks it, is he still the greatest of all time? If a tree falls in the woods, it doesn't make noise. But no. that's what I'm saying. There's like, only one quasi semi celebrity in the NBA who sucks. That's Jason, Jason Collins. Collins. <laughs> he's the only one. Literally. Listen. <laughs> he literally <laughs> sucks. Listen, he's, the, oh, he's terrible on the court. He averages like .9 point nine and point, point .9 rebounds. He's yeah. terrible. Listen, but he got that locker room clean as a motherfucker. He's the, <laughs> <laughs> that locker room is decorated to a T. He's only on, sway in the locker room. He's only on late night TV. His jersey only sells because he's gay. That's right, it. But. It has nothing to do with his basketball prowess. And you know what? So did Jeremy Lin. Jeremy Lin's jersey no. only sold because he was Asian. He was good, though. He was For a minute. Decent. Yes, he had For a, a streak very where short he was minute. Michael Jordan. He was not Jordan. But no. He, no. He was not Jordan. You must forget that 10-game winning streak. He was not Jordan. But he did an, an exception. He did very well, and now he is a decent no. player. He did, first of all, for a short Asian oh, guy, oh. Jeremy Lin dunked one game. Oh. <laughs> it, he was hitting game-winning shots. You just said it. For a short Asian guy. That's my point. For an <laughs> Asian. That's, that's exactly that's what I'm saying. still good, though. For a short Asian. There were black dudes in the NBA. They were averaging more than him throughout that stretch, and nobody gave a fuck. Because he came out of nowhere. Because he's a because short he wasn't Asian good before guy. that. <laughs> That's the point. He yeah. came out of nowhere because ki- no one knew. He killed it in college. He did. I mean, he killed he it in college. Went to Harvard. Nobody watches the Harvard basketball team. That's a great point. We don't look at Harvard for <laughs> basketball players. Yo, who's the next Harvard president game? coming out of Harvard? <laughs> exactly. You never hear who's the next great basketball player coming out of Harvard. I even Harvard had a basketball team. Yeah. Yeah, no if you're idea. hiring someone from Harvard, it's not one of their players. How <laughs> wasn't Barack Obama on the goddamn Harvard basketball team? They're not that bad. <laughs> like, like, I know Barack plays ball, but like, he's not great. I don't like, know. I don't know. I feel like you can't is, be that bad if you spawned anyone from that. I don't think celebrity has NBA. nothing to do with how good, how big an athlete is, though. If no, they're considered, you, when you're considering you're them, of good like he is, yes, okay, fair, 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 it's fair. talent how that makes famous, you a celebrity. Uh, I felt fame. Well, no, no, or no, there's, no or it's not talent. Jason Collins has a unique aspect. That's why he's a celebrity. It's not his talent. I, no. Wait, what? But being gay is unique now? In the NBA, it's incredibly unique being an out bas- gay basketball Sorry, player. Sorry, NBA. There's gay people that exist on this planet. Not in the NBA. We have to stop doing that, though. Wait, but real quick. Okay. Barack Obama being 
the first black president brings some more awareness to him. Right. It's not unique. Gives him though. more notoriety. It like, is completely unique. How many other black presidents we had? I think unique. We got to look up the definition. We of had unique. one other black president. Okay. No. Oh, Bill Clinton. No, Abraham oh. Lincoln. We don't know if he was black or not. He that wasn't even a fucking top hat. That was an afro. They just didn't know how to. <laughs> they didn't know how to. Exactly. Flat, flat top. top. <laughs> that was kid and play before yeah, kid and play. Bro, in a flat top. <laughs> he was from Philly. You know he's from Philly. <laughs> what other race would sign the Emancipation Proclamation during that time? Exactly. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln was black as fuck, and we all know. I, I listen. I, I really Lincoln. I really feel that we're not going to make strides in this country and really start dealing with homo- uh, equality when it comes to homosexuality mm-hmm. until we stop looking at it like they're aliens or Sasquatch or something we've never seen before. I feel like it's so commonplace, though, now. That it got, yes, I feel like that, too. Like, Pride Weekend is next weekend, I think, right? Yeah. I think, I'm pretty sure. And the fact that I even know that, like, it's just very I didn't common. know that. You know what? The fact... Speaking to what you're saying right there, mm-hmm. uh, not making a big deal about things is a sign of equality. I think that's what I you're agree. saying, yeah. right? Because Jason Quallen should not, at any point, in any time, in any life, have the number one selling jersey in the league. Who the <laughs> fuck would want to wear Jason Quallen's jersey? I don't care that he's gay. This is about basketball. He averages 0.9. He shouldn't be in the league no more, truthfully speaking. Absolutely not. Yeah. Him coming out the closet prolonged his career. It's very yes, strategic. very much so. He was <laughs> yes. retired. Yes. I don't know if he was retired, but yes. nobody. He was a free agent. He wasn't on nobody's team. Yes, no. And, and but you know, uh, it is good for. I think it's good for the league, though. I think it's good for the league. I think yeah. it's good for everybody to see an openly gay player and see no, that. No, wait no, for no, it no. and see that not be a big, big deal. deal. No. How do you say no? Gay people deserve better. They need somebody who averages at least double digits and points <laughs> and rebounds. It's easy to be gay Listen. when you don't play. Let me tell you, you average your point nine points a game. You don't even come off the bench. Let me tell you something. A, f- a good gay player is going to kill that runway walk to the arena. Oh my God. Do you know that runway walk to the arena where everybody shows off their fucking outfit and <laughs> shit like that? Oh, they are going to kill. We are going to be tuning in for that shit nah. just to see the cape. Nah, because you got all these guys that dress flamboyantly now. Russell, yep. Bro- Russell Westbrook, Pants are way Dwayne too tight. Wade. You know, how funny yeah. would that be if there was a thugged out gay dude in the NBA, just a tough guy gay dude that was making fun of the way all these dudes dress? Like, yo, I wouldn't even fuck these motherfuckers. Tight pant wearing <laughs> Russell Westbrook <laughs> flowery ass shirt. I ain't trying to suck your dick. You got flowers on your shirt. I need a real G. You know what I mean? Someone who wears leather. You know what I mean? <laughs> what happened to the 80s, dog? Yeah, what happened to the 80s? You know what I'm saying? I want a chain around your neck so I could grab you by it like a pit bull. <laughs> oh no, I agree with what you're saying about, like, you know, even saying gay people deserve better to have someone to, to represent them, but, and I agree that that shouldn't be a factor in sports and that it should be based on talent, but unfortunately, it's just the way it is. I don't know. People feed into it and there's fandom, there's fandom with it. I mean, you're playing in front of people. Like, it's a spectator sport. You know there's going to be fandom and it contributes greatly to how successful people are considered It's sometimes. only fandom if you're good. You can't name me one subpar celebrity basketball player. If you're not good, they don't give a fuck about you. Yeah, no. J.R. Smith is a great example. Go. Last year, when the, the Knicks were winning, he was in the clubs with Rihanna, and he had became a celebrity. He was the sixth man of the year, yada, yada, yada. This year, nobody gave a fuck about J.R. Smith because he sucked yeah. on the basketball court. It's interesting. That's true, yeah. but people still know his name, is my point. People, so people who like don't watch sports, like I work with a lot of people that might not watch, watch sports, or I went to college with a bunch of white girls in a sorority mm-hmm. that probably don't watch basketball at all, but know LeBron's name, or might know... JR's name because he was in the headlines and because he was popping. But to that point, playing in the NBA, you are with only 200 other people in the world. Yeah. It's true. not that many people to memorize. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It's not like, for example, uh, working at Kinko's. <laughs> where there's fucking hundreds of thousands of employees. Listen, the NBA only got like 200 people. I can't even, I can't name, I can't name, I can only name three people in you Oklahoma could, City. You could probably name 50 ballers. Yeah, but... A t- but think about that. That's a team quarter team, of the employees. In, you go team for team, I can name one or two people. You, I think you're not giving yourself enough credit. Yeah. I think name, you can name... Name, three pe- name name five people on the Miami Heat. Mario Chalmers, okay. Chris Bosh, LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Chris Anderson, uh, Ray Allen. Okay, they're the champion. Ray- <laughs> name five on <laughs> Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, Serge Ibaka, uh, Derek Fisher was... Uh, the nappy-headed guy. Uh, well, a team full of black people. They're all <laughs> no, this dude has fucking like net. Like his, it looks what is, it looks like um, when the bread gets 
bad and that green shit grows on it. I don't know who the fuck you're talking. You about. mean mold? Mold. Yeah, it looks like just, it's it looks. <laughs> what oh, is it? Shit. Jackson. Mold. Jackson. Uh, I don't know who you're talking about. Uh, uh, what's it called? He, he was the point guard. Um, That's my point. No, no, but I can name more. I can name, name more. In Oklahoma five City. Milwaukee Bucks. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh no, no. I got this. I got this. John Sammons. I don't even listen. I don't even know their <laughs> names. To know if you're telling me the truth right now. Um, there's a there's a tall, goofy white guy from like Lithuania. No, that don't count. I'm talking about first. All the white guys in the NBA are they look Name five Charlotte goofy. Bobcats page. No, I can't. My I point. could do that. No, but I'm Michael also Kidd Gilchrist, right? Um, Kwame Kilpatrick. Kwame Kilpatrick. No, not Kilpatrick. What's his name? Kemba Walker. That's his name. Kemba. Kwame <laughs> Kilpatrick. Damn, he landed on his feet. Kwame got a job with the Bobcats. <laughs> uh, yeah, Kemba Walker. Uh, fuck, I can't. I really can't name that many. Henderson. There's a guy named Henderson. Um, God, I'm really okay. not sounding like a. I think you just poked ball. a ton of holes in your theory. Now, now, why? Now, LeBron. That's what he was talking about. Yeah. Why do you think he's leaving? I Hold think up, Paige, you go. Ahead. You're a sports person. You want to be a sports caster? Go. I want to be. Leaving? I was a sports. Why is is he leaving? Mm-hmm. If he leaves, I mean, like you said before, he runs. That's what he does. You know what I mean? And I, I personally wouldn't play for a team after I had not gotten the ring. You know what I mean? I would, I would want to start a new chapter. You oh, know what I mean? He already has rings. <laughs> All you millennials disgust me. Why? Just because you don't win one year, you're just going to up and leave the no, whole No, but I, I'm just saying that's I what I feel like is going to happen. You know what? He's done if, it before. It's going to happen again. He's going to start another chapter with another team, uh-huh. continue the LeBron legacy, because his fans are going to go his with him. His legacy's ruined. If no, he goes I don't to another not, team, he's not a for fucking LeBron, NBA whore. Not for LeBron, LeBron, LeBron fans. fans love LeBron fans. Oh, LeBron fans are so Heat much. fans, but then they're going to go to the next team. There's no, this is why I would leave if I was LeBron. Game, what is it, game five? I think it was game five. Whatever, the last game that was played in Miami. Mm-hmm. As they were losing, 50 to 75% of the crowd left left the game. I always say Miami yeah. Heat don't have fans. They got groupies. They're, yes. That's the second they're you stop selling groupies. records, they the fuck out of there. Out. So this is my point. How can you ask a player to stay if you won't even stay for that player? If, if, if I'm LeBron. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, if, can you? I, I'm with you. If so I'm LeBron go. and I leave for Miami, there's only one place he can go. To solidify his legacy, back to Cleveland. It's the only thing that makes. I don't sense. think he'll go back to Cleveland. Listen, if he goes back to Cleveland, you win one ring in Cleveland. That's equivalent to both of those bum ass rings he won in Miami. He'll be a hero for sure. But I don't if think he he's wins go back one to ring in Cleveland, yeah. he's a martyr. You build a statue outside for this guy. But do you think what? Cleveland fans want him back? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Do you know how bad it is? Cleveland is like Gotham. From the Batman movies, that is don't how depressing. Like that. Don't, don't insult Gotham <laughs> like that. That it is so depressing. Like when when you fly over Cleveland in a plane, right. there is like this ominous feeling. You're just like, oh man, this is just. You feel the sadness emanate from <laughs> Cleveland up into the, the plane. That is the despair. <laughs> You feel the sadness emanate. It literally, literally, the bottom of the plane gets cold. His wife put on Twitter. Uh, a picture of a- Akron, Ohio, and yeah. put "Home Sweet Home." Countdown begins. That was all savvy. I think that's set up. Hey, you don't think that's set up? Whatever it was, it was amazing. But if he wants to solidify his legacy and go down as one of the all-time greats, for real, for real, when that should have. But don't you think he'd have that fear that he wouldn't? And if he doesn't, then it's over for LeBron. It's I don't, quiet for LeBron. I don't if think he doesn't so. win another ring, and especially if he goes back to Cleveland, no, and is so. supposed to be the hero, like, don't you think it's, it's quiet, quiet for, for LeBron? I don't, I don't, no, it's not. It it's is quiet. quiet for LeBron. It's quiet because I, he lost. Yeah. Outside of the hype, because we have nothing to say. Like, yo, listen, I told Robin Lumberg today. I said, if you stop comparing LeBron James to the greats, mm-hmm. you wouldn't have to defend them so much. Stop comparing them to Michael Jordan. Yeah. Compare them to now. Him to Compare them to his, his peers. And you're good. And you're good. But this is the problem I have with all this stuff, too. LeBron didn't get the ring. LeBron, like, there are other people on the team, you know what I mean? That's that's a problem I have with, like, the fandom and NBA and basketball that's in general. That's like that forever, though. I know, but that's but that's what we're saying. Like, LeBron didn't get it. LeBron didn't get it. There are, like, four other players on that Listen, court that could have... when LeBron won it, did we say, hey, you know who Word fucking up. killed it? Chris Anderson. <laughs> Chris Anderson won Word that up. fucking ring, Word you know? Up. All right. So he... Credit. Word up. You get the credit when you win, you got to get the credit when you lose. Absolutely. Simple as that. LeBron has to go back. What is that? What is that, Greg? Greg is passing us something right now. Oh, you think he's going to go to the Bulls? Yeah, let's talk about it. 
Greg, you're on drugs. That's Andrew Schultz's <laughs> brother. My brother. My brother's just showing us <laughs> random Mello pictures. Anthony may go to the Bulls, but LeBron James is not going to yeah, the Bulls. Yeah, that's what I don't know. Where do you well, think Melo's going to go? They say that Melo and LeBron might link up in Cleveland. I would like to see that. I don't think it would ever happen. I don't think so either, but I would love to see it. They don't need uh, Melo in Cleveland. They need a big man. They got Kyrie Irving. That's going to be LeBron's I number love two. Kyrie. They need a big man. They need Kevin Love or somebody. Uh, Kevin Love's so overrated. No, he's not. Why do you keep saying that? So I don't want this is not a sports podcast, but we have this conversation all the time. This is a culture podcast. It's a culture podcast. <laughs> why That's do you, we are. Kevin We're Love is a 20 and 15 guy. Listen, initially, and we had this talk a while ago. I, I was talking to you, and I was like, this guy's incredible. What's up with the NBA? Not backing this guy. I don't care if you drop 20 and 15 if you lose. Every guy that's in the NBA right now can drop 2015 losing. Dog, do you drop know, 2015 and win. Make your players yeah. better Dog, on your team. Do you know it's another Kevin who did the exact same thing when he was in Minnesota, Kevin Garnett? Yeah. Kevin Garnett went to the Western Conference Finals like once. That's when they had Latrell Sprewell and San Cassell. He used to do the same thing in Minnesota for years. They had Steph that's Marbury Kevin over there the too. Fuck out of there. But they haven't even made the playoffs. That's not Kevin Love's fault. Yes, he has it, nothing around you him. You get the credit. You get the disses. Whatever That's what you, you just, just said. said. You just, you so you just either get that. the credit. If you're that good, if you are an A plus player, name one elite player in the in the league that doesn't make it to the playoffs. Okay. Name one. He should have made it to the playoffs at least once. Just give me a playoff run. But That's you all take I'm Kevin asking. Love, put him in <laughs> Cleveland I mean, like, with LeBron James and Kyrie Irving. They're going to the finals. I mean, take Paige and put her in Cleveland with fucking with Kyrie Irving and LeBron Kyrie. James. They're going to make it to the playoffs. We're going to be talking about Paige no, like finals. Eastern the Conference greatest finals. jump shot in the history. No, Eastern Conference Finals possible championship. If, if, they, if they're in Cle- I think whatever team LeBron goes to realistically is making the playoffs and probably making Eastern Conference Finals. East is weak, dog. East is weak. Yeah. That's what I said. When they talk about LeBron going to the West, Man, get the fuck, fuck out of here. <laughs> he'd be lucky. He'll make the playoffs. He'd be lucky to get to the Western Conference Finals. Said, you don't want to go up against these Spurs. These Spurs are bad motherfuckers. The Spurs could win it again next year. I think they, I think they win it again, and then they're off to the sunset. Well, dunk it is. I think, oh, well, Parker will stay around. I think Ginobili's done. I think Ginobili and LeBron are going to go get a hair treatment. <laughs> I think Ginobili and LeBron are going to link up. And, you know, Ginobili's going to donate the front portion of his hair to LeBron. To LeBron's and LeBron's going to donate the, 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 the yarmulke portion to Ginobili. If Ginobili doesn't convert to Judaism portion. immediately and just <laughs> keep, and keep his hair exactly where it is, I think that's God going Ginobili. What's it called? <laughs> The yarmulke. The yarmulke. 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 I said harmonica or something. The yarmulke. <laughs> the yarmulke. <laughs> the yarmulke. <laughs> Give me right. the topic. What's the other topic about the lady who hit the ducks? All right. This is some wild shit that happened. Uh, this is some wild shit that happened in, in Canada. Um, I don't know if you heard about this story, Paige. So so basically this lady was driving, right? Some ducks of course it was were crossing the highway. Okay. Right? Real Canadian. <laughs> Just a duck. duck. I've never even seen a duck in real life. So ducks are crossing the highway. She stops the car. A car behind her smashes into her. Two people die in a car. She's going to jail for 14 years for manslaughter. Oh, wow. So the argument is, is it a natural reaction to just stop? Yeah. Like when you see something. Jesus Christ, there's really nothing going on this week, huh? <laughs> nah. <laughs> is it a natural shit, reaction nah. to put on the brakes this when something comes out in, in front minutes. of you? you know, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yes, it's we a natural reaction to stop. So then you can't put her in jail. No, it's not her. I mean... It, she was trying to be courteous to other lives, and then you're going to take her life away because she it was an accident. Exactly. It's basically, called a car accident for a reason. It was an accident. Yeah. I mean, so so basically what, what they're going to do is um, they're going to use this as the premise for the next Duck Hunt video game. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> Say some shit, right? I'm like, I, I, what? <laughs> Anguilla is one of my favorite places in the world, yeah. the island of Anguilla. Yeah. They stop for animals when they're crossing the road. They stop for for turtles in Jersey. Yeah, they stop for there's no. signs. Who the fuck stops for turtles in Jersey? Not not like North well, like Jersey, Jersey, like South turtles? Jersey, South Jersey, like Atlantic City and like oh, Ocean City and Cape May. Right. All there's like little turtles that cross the street all the time. There's signs that like watch the turtles. Wait, New Jersey has turtles. Yeah, you've never been I to South turtles Jersey. Turtles are like an exotic like thing with the waters clear. No, like snapping turtles and stuff. No, this is mind boggling. You are from New York, aren't you? You don't see turtles. I don't a lot. know about I animals. See turtles all the time in Jersey. I, Where? Even in PA, Where snapping turtles at? everywhere. You see turtles, 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 turtles. <laughs> with the shell and Why shit. Why is that Ninja so weird turtles, to you? Dog. Sorry. You saying you see a turtle and that's a regular thing for you to see a fucking turtle. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. I see turtles in Chinatown. What do you think's like a regular thing? Like a pigeon? Like Yeah, like a pigeon or a squirrel or a dog. <laughs> turtles in Chinatown. 
But oh. I have seen the pig- the turtles in Chinatown, but I assume that they brought those from China or some shit. What? I don't. Turtles think aren't exotic animals. They're turtles. They. Yeah, why are you acting like turtles or something? They live in ponds, shit, like randomly. Hold up, hold up, hold up. You guys are making me look like the weird one here. <laughs> the only exotic turtles on this planet are uh, Michelangelo, Donatello, Raphael, and Leonardo, and my, and Russell Westbrook. <laughs> And Russell, 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 Oh, Neo. Neo's got a big ass head. He's definitely got the brains of the fucking operation. Maybe. <laughs> I love you very seriously. Like I, I got that. a fucking bucket hat on. Yeah, you got to keep the bucket hat off. Okay, give us another topic. And you really, that and you really look like a turtle. Really We're going to name this podcast. This podcast sucks. No, let's be positive about it. <laughs> this podcast. <laughs> this podcast fucking sucks. All right, all right, all right, all right. Actually, I like talking about the uh, what's it called stories. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the what's it did called? we even come to a conclusion to that last topic? Which was? Don't run over animals. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, or run over them because then you won't kill people. But I feel, I mean, I feel like I I hit a bunny once and I cried. Like, I st- you try and stop, you know? It's did a you natural hit the reaction. Bunny? I did hit a bunny. I would have run over this fucking bunny so fucking. I'm not stopping for shit. Why? I won't stop for most people, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> It's because you're from New York. I'm being it's dead sick. Si- Listen, if it, because if you swerve, then I could die. Right. So if it's me or them, I'd rather them. The other thing is they probably, yes. you never yes. seen a dude walking on the highway, like a Mexican dude walking on the fucking highway, and you're like, oh, shit. Right, but in that instant Get of like fear and you panic. You cannot run over Mexican people. You can't. First of all, they they sometimes they'll slide right under. This isn't good. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to do a fucking show in Arizona, and you're going to be in a world of trouble, dog. Arizona is the last place you would have to worry about that shit. Maybe some sometimes of the other they just cities. slide right under. It's fine. You act like you like almost. No, I, I'm before. saying all I'm saying is if it's me or them, it's me. Okay. You don't think that? Yeah, but no. In that, I'm saying in that instant of fear, like that's a logical way. To think. In that instant of fear, that panic, like when you hydroplane, you're not supposed to slam on the brakes, but that's like your instinct to do it because you to get do it. scared. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So in that instant of fear, I feel like you don't think about it. You just like it scares you. It comes out of nowhere. Yeah. It's not like you have time to plan. You see, my world, there is no fear. <laughs> oh. My my, <laughs> <Okay>. my <laughs> instinct is to stop when I see animals. Really? Yes. My instinct is to stop when I see anything. If there's a big in your trash and like I, I would try and go around it or I always stop. feel bad when I hit an animal when you grew I up in Monk's should. Corner South Carolina population 3,000 dirt yes. roads it's Monk's I, County I set it? that up population right? less than 8,000 population less yeah. than 8,000 uh, <laughs> did you ever hit some animals absolutely not I think I hit a dog like maybe once <gasps> a dog yeah but we come from you hit the dog you stop to see if the dog's dead you make sure the dog's good the dog yeah. got a broke leg you probably take the dog home get him back right like it was that real like animals are people too dog no, well, they're, they're not, not people, they're, but they're, they're not people. <laughs> they're absolutely they're, they're not animals. people. Animals. You said some shit like that on the last podcast. I caught that was so fucking funny. You was like, you was like, see, when you're dealing with animals and other humans, <laughs> what? What else happened this week? I went to the Chappelle show. And How I was that? I see your shirt. You, Chappelle's went, dick. Yo, you got on the Chappelle shirt. You go to the Nas one? I went. No, I didn't go to the Nas one. Uh, thank you for making me feel like I missed out on oh, some sorry. shit. Uh, <laughs> I went on the one It was just Chappelle And it was uh, Donnell Rawlings Opened our Code Gang Brethren Aww. Damn Donnell and Dave Still talk And Charlie Murphy Was there Holy wow. shit So it was a little reunion Chappelle was amazing Charlie Murphy did a joke That I thought was Very similar To a Charlemagne the God I like to call Your stuff bits I know you're not a comedian But as a comedian I like to call Some of your stuff bits I don't tell jokes I tell the truth Well so do I But you just like The expectations to be lower <laughs> uh, yeah. So So basically you do a bit about the N word, uh-huh. right? Where you're saying that the N word doesn't just apply to black people. Black people. Yeah. Anybody can be the N word. White people, Mexicans, uh, Puerto Ricans, everybody can be the N word. Everybody N-words. can be the N word. Yeah. And Charlie Murphy did a bit where, and he basically said exactly that. And then he gave a scenario of like some white dude that was fucking his sister in a trailer. And he, you know, he was like, listen, I don't think I'm the N word here. But he should have said "Honey Boo Boo" then. It'd have got a bigger pop. Oh, see, now you're writing jokes. I'm just see. saying. Now you're tagging all up. the Kardashians from the like, comedian who's not <laughs> a comedian. I'm just exactly. saying. Exactly. There's a lot of better examples you could have used, Charlie, than you know, the guy in the trailer park. Give put names to them. Put faces to those guys in the trailer park. Okay, specifics. Yeah. Was Donnell funny? I only came at the end of Donnell. Literally, right as Donnell was bringing up the next guy, I, I dropped in there. How was Chappelle? Chappelle was literally incredible. 
like what I'm made a, him so incredible. I mean, just the fucking he's just first of all, he's a really smart dude. You know, so the way he thinks about all these topics is different than you could have ever expected. Right. Second of all, he's just mastered the skill of stand up comedy. You know, yeah. so mm-hmm. so you match intellect with extreme skill. It's just like a ball player. If you're a basketball player who's got great basketball IQ and you've got incredible skills, mm-hmm. you could be Kobe and play at 36 years old and lead the league in scoring. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. He literally, I mean, it was just fucking genius, the shit he was saying. See, my co host went on. Last Friday, yeah. Nicole, and give him a shout out. Hannah Rad, DJ yeah. Hannah Rad. Um, she went with her wife on Friday, and she said it was, eh. And I was very like, I wanted to go to see the Nos when I was trying Never to get tickets. Never trust her opinion again. On Ever anything. in life, <laughs> on she anything. said. It, she said it also might have been the audience was didn't receive some of the stuff as well as it should have been received. See, she's the type did, of wait, did she te- did she, she, she's a lesbian, right? Mm-hmm. He has a lesbian joke, so maybe she was offended about that where he beat I don't think so because she's not club. she doesn't get offended easily. But she's the type of person that doesn't trust anything if it don't get a bunch of retweets. Who Hannah? Oh yeah. she, she needs No, she's co-signs. a very independent yeah. thinker. So then why was Actually, why, why does she why, worry exactly, about the audience? Why would the audience Dictate no, she said she's and she's like funny. a huge Chappelle fan, and she was like, I was so excited to go, and we got these tickets, and right, we've been waiting for so joke long about, about beating up this lesbian in the club. Don't tell his material. I'm not gonna tell his <laughs> joke, but I'm saying that might turn you off if you, if Maybe. you know. No, and then I was really sad because I was like, oh, darn it! I mean, I've heard great amazing, things about the best, the, show. the best in the game. I I always thought Patrice was the best. Okay. And after seeing this, Patrice O'Neill, Patrice O'Neill, and rest in peace. Uh, after seeing this, I gotta say, maybe Patrice is you know my favorite. But Chappelle is, I think, just the best. I feel like Dave Chappelle lives with a lot of regret now, too. Like when I saw him on uh, Letterman mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. he was talking about the, you know, him turning down turning all that down money back money, in the yeah. day for Comedy Central, I think it was like 50 million. It seems like he regrets it. He, I don't never, like, that is my fear in life. Regretting things? That I'm going to do something, make a poor decision that I'm going to regret later. But isn't regret like, like in what, the eye for of example? the beholder? Just strictly business. Nothing else. Like, I, not, I, personally, not tattoos. I definitely regret all the tattoos, <laughs> but, but, but personally, I'm a very, I'm a Give very- Give me Wolverine on, on my, my arm, arm. I'm getting this done now. over. With six blades. I'm getting this done over, by the way. It's my Wolverine tattoo. What are you going to get put there? Wolverine. Oh, and you're, you're just getting get it better. on top of Wolverine. He's going to look more Hugh Jackman-ish. And, not, and less wax. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But, oh but, 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 just got wax in a Halloween costume. But personal decisions <laughs> don't bother me because I make good personal decisions, good yeah. choices for myself. Right. But business decisions are always so hard to make. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. there's the well, stakes there's a reason they're business. High. Yeah, business decisions are very impactful. Think about the stakes of these decisions. Yeah. You, you make one choice. And that can set you down this, you know, road for the not the rest of your career, but a long, a long time. It took Chappelle ten years to come back Just to, to where he is. Road. He's not even doing a TV show. Just to be doing stand up. Yeah. At the highest level, it took him ten fucking years. And you know, man, yeah, it's it's just tough. I don't think he regrets. I think he regrets. Really? Why? Why do you think he regrets? He looked regretful when he said it on on uh, Letterman. You know, I saw him at the Comedy Cellar, and he was, uh, it was him and Chris Rock were on stage with Marlon Wayans, and uh, it was a tiny little venue, and someone asked him, you know, about the Chappelle, uh, Chappelle show being canceled, or not turning down the $50 million. And he was like, uh, and he's like, I never said this before, but I'll tell you guys why I did it. Uh, he goes, I was watching National Geographic, and this was a great metaphor for what I did. And it was uh, these bush people in Africa when they can't find water, right? And they're in the middle of the, of the jungle, or whatever they got in Africa. The jungle? The forest or whatever? I don't jungle. Know. Jungle, yeah. So he goes, what they do is they set a salt trap for a baboon. They put a little salt in a hole in a tree, right? And what happens is the baboon finds the salt and grabs onto the salt, but once it puts its hand there and grabs the salt, it can't take its hand out. Mm. Now, the baboon, if it was smart enough, could just let go of the salt and take his hand out. Right. But he doesn't want to let go of the salt. Mm. So he holds on to that salt. The bush guy goes, grabs the baboon, puts him in a cage. Then he feeds the baboon salt. Feeds him salt until he can't eat any more salt. Baboons love salt. That's their favorite shit. So he can't <laughs> do any more salt. Then he lets the baboon go. The baboon goes finds water. The baboon goes finds water. And he goes, he goes, with that Comedy Central show, I can smell a salt trap. Hmm. I don't believe that shit. That's a pretty ass metaphor. I might not. That's a great <laughs> metaphor. That's a great metaphor. That's a great, a great metaphor. fucking metaphor. <laughs> but I don't believe that shit. I believe that he made an emotional decision. Okay. 
and it was strictly an emotional decision, and you will always regret an emotional decision. You have to move off strategy. Emotional decisions are when you up and leave something, nothing else. No backup plan. Hey, I don't want to do that. I want to do this. Strategy is I'm leaving this, but it's because I'm going to do this. Yes. It was no strategy. Yeah, it was a. That's a great emotional no decision versus strategic decision. And, 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 and you know what else emotional decisions point. do? Emotional decisions leave everybody up, everybody else hung and dry. Donnell Rollins was hung and dry. Charlie. Charlie was hung and dry. Neil Brennan was hung and dry. Like what the fuck? You just up and made an emotional decision and bounced. So what do you do when you got a decision that There's, you need to make and it's and, and emotions are are flaring? You sleep on that shit. You sleep on it. You pray on it. You talk to people that you absolutely trust. What's an emotional decision you decide to not make because you want to strategize? Hmm. I haven't had any in business. And bit like, cause for, for the most part, organically, I always feel like this is what I need to be doing. And I go do it. And mm -hmm. nobody else, nobody can make me say, nah, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. This is what I want to do. Like MTV, I want to be with MTV. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, MTV2, I want to be with MTV2. Power 105, Clear Channel. That's why I wanted to be. Like, I want to be in these situations. Like, it's that, it's that simple. I feel like you're a very strategic person, though. Like, there can, people be, can be people that are just generally, like, I make emotional decisions. I know I do. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I when I was in the middle of, like, negotiating my contract, I'm like, I just want to sign it, I just want to sign it to Charlemagne. You know what I mean? Like, he's like, no, like, you have to be strategic. You have to, I'm someone who moves off of, like, feeling, which is bad, but, No, you know. no, you should move off feeling, but it has to be strategy and feeling because we all know what we want. You know, when you, when you silence the noise, the noise is, what other people are telling you that you should do, what attorneys are telling you you should do, agents are telling you you should do, executives at the networks are telling you you should do. When you silence all that noise and just simply say, where should I be? God's, God's going to tell you. Or the universe going to tell you. Whatever you believe in is going to tell you. The answer is right there. We just, the noise around us is so loud that we listen to all these different opinions instead of listening to that inner voice that's in us saying, no, this is what you want, you want to do. And, and Paige's situation Yes, she wanted to be with Revolt. She was just, she was, she was, she was, she wasn't patient enough to just let the process happen with the attorneys and everybody else, <laughs> because people were saying, "Hey, you gotta sign out, gotta sign out, gotta sign out." That's what they do. You I mean, I feel that like that's shows. the point. Yeah, they pressure you to make the decision quickly yes. so they could get on over you. Yeah, that's what they do. That's what they all do. It I mean, I don't stops. think that's what was happening, but I think I was just excited to be working. Is this your first contract? Yeah. That's exactly how I felt when MTV offered me my deal, my first deal. Yeah. It was the first deal I'd ever been offered. And, and you're just excited. You just... Shit, my manager and agent at the time are negotiating the terms mm -hmm. and, you know, throwing big numbers back at them and saying, we have yeah. to turn this down. And I'm like, I... <laughs> I'm fine I with that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I eat ramen. Do you know what I mean? I eat dollar pizza. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like <laughs> this is a ah. lot of fucking money. You know yeah. what I mean? God, I don't know if we are ready to walk. Like, it's easy for your manager and agent to walk away because they have a house with a pool. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, when you're living with your parents still, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And your mom wakes you up in the morning to help her <laughs> send an email. You know what, yeah. what, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you don't want to turn around down anything. So... So yeah, you're right. Taking a step away from that. Shit. I feel like step some people away. can't do that though. Like silence I feel like the there noise. are people that always That's can't do silence that. Silence the noise. Wait, what do you say, Paige? I feel like there are always gonna be people that can't do that though. Like a lot of people can't separate. You know what I mean? What everyone. A lot of people are people pleasers. You know, like if you're generally a people pleaser and people you care about, like you said, if you can't make a decision, you go with people you care about, whatever. And 20 million people are pulling you 20 million ways. Sometimes you, I feel There's like nothing you can't. wrong with being a people pleaser. You just got to make sure that the person that you ultimately please is yourself. Because at the end of the day, you got to live with that decision. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, I would not live with regret if it's something that I really want to do. I think you live with regret when you make a decision that you know wasn't the right decision to make from the beginning. And then the future just solidifies that it wasn't the right decision. Yeah. Like I love Dave Chappelle. Better. But I promise you, Dave Chappelle will never get offered $50 million to do anything ever again in his life. And it ain't even all about the money. But it's about the opportunity. I don't think he'll ever get an opportunity like that ever again. I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong. I'm sure networks would be scared. Of course. I bet yeah. nobody would insure the show. We don't know. We don't know if this guy's a liability or not. Which goes back to what I was saying about Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart will continue to always win <laughs> because he has no issues. Networks. Everybody's like, this guy's on time everywhere. He's got eight different things to do, but he's at all eight of them. He handles the workload. Let's keep giving him work. 
There is something to making your employers feel feel comfortable. Yes, obviously. You know what I mean? It's obviously, just, it's like some people love you know the star. Like some people have this fucking crazy presence. Of, you know, DMX for example has this amazing. You know, extreme a, liability though exactly but it's like it's like yeah he's amazing he's gonna fucking uh, do uh, what is it uh, Rudolph the Red Root Nose Reindeer he's mm-hmm. gonna do all this crazy shit that's yeah. gonna get you all this heat but at the same time you're gonna have to put up with the fact that he's gonna need a crack break and be and what, scared all the time that something is gonna go wrong and will he show up to even do Rudolph yeah. the Red Nose what time is he gonna get hit <laughs> it's like, the same thing with Kanye like Kanye should have been it's not even had, Christmas anymore you know what I mean clothing and shoes and stuff Kanye but what I said it's the same thing with Kanye people are just afraid of him because liability like you know what I mean he, you never know what's gonna happen with Kanye you can't put you know what I mean you can't hold him somewhere Kanye and know is. it's gonna be okay Kanye will fuck up the sponsorship the show will be sponsored by Pepsi and he'll get on stage and say how Something he hates Coke. Pepsi <laughs> yeah he hates Pepsi because they don't support black people <laughs> but that's the point. Like you can't, you don't know what's gonna come out of his mouth. So you know, what I mean, so people like safe. You know, it's not even about being safe. See, that's, that's the other word I don't like. Safe. Yes, it's not about being safe. It's about being reliable. Yeah. Okay. But part what's, of being safe is being reliable. No, it's not. It's okay. I'm always on time. Reliable is safe. But I'm there's... always where I need to be. Yeah, but th- I understand what she's saying. Like, you want a certain safety. There is a safety to, to working with Ryan Seacrest. You know, there's a safety to working with you. You can we're, We can rely on you saying some wild-ass shit to J-Lo, but you're not going to try to finger J-Lo. Uh, no. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I, I know. Like they, some type of sexual assault. Exactly, because they know that you're going to say some shit. You're going you're gonna to push the limits but you're going to stay within the legal boundaries. You jumped out the window just now. So no, nobody's going to just try to finger J-Lo in the middle of a goddamn listen, if Wax DM- might. Listen, if there's some crack inside <laughs> fucking J-Lo's pussy, DMX is going to be in there with three fingers like, hey, let me get this crack. Listen, J-Lo, let me get this crack. People said, people said a lot of things about Howard Stern. Howard Stern never was called unreliable. You never heard somebody say Howard doesn't do his job. Howard shows up for work late. I've known great radio personalities who had all the talent in the world, but they were fuck ups. Mm-hmm. They'd come to work late. Sometimes they wouldn't come to work at all. They were hard to deal with. I tell people all the time: the best thing somebody can say about you is they are a pleasure to, to work, work with. with. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's what you want stamped across your name. Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck what it is you do. He's a pleasure to work with. You get that, you will always continue to get work. Because you can find a million people that are good at the same thing. Yes, you can. But the person that's going to stand out is the one that you know shakes everyone's hand or yes. is just friendly or nice to be around or is on time. You know what I mean? If I have a co I'm not saying I have a co-host, but if I have a co-host that does the exact same thing as me but shows up late all the time, like who do you think they're going to book for things? You know? It's Absolutely. Just, just the way it goes. That's why Kevin Hart scares the shit out of people. Because he's, he's going to show up. He's, go, he's reliable. Because he's going to show up. He's going to show up. He's going to know his lines. Issues. Exactly. People, I guarantee you, with somebody wondering, what happened to the days of strung out black comedians <laughs> who showed up when the fuck they wanted to show up, did drugs, cursed people to fuck out, set shit on fire? What happened to those days? Was Cat Williams the last one that fucking is going to go crazy? <laughs> Think about it. Why are we drawn to crazy? We're not. Contrary to popular belief, no, we're not. We, we are drawn People to crazy. People are. People you know, love it's drama. It's not crazy. It don't last. It's not crazy we're drawn to. We're drawn to unexpectedness. <laughs> That's not a word. Just ness. But you know what I mean? Like, we're drawn, like... Erratic behavior. Erratic behavior. Thank you for making me sound smart. Yeah. Erratic behavior. That's what we... It is interesting to watch something... Like, I enjoy watching some shit where I don't know what's going to happen next. Obviously. I you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Unpredictability. And I think crazy people or wild people, whatever we were talking about, are unpredictable. Right. So, and, but those are those people who can harness unpredictability and be reliable, shit. Yeah. There you go. You're winning. It's not too many of those, dog. Very few. Very few. Because mm-hmm. what makes you unpredictable often is the is that exact you don't have thing a reserve. that makes you unreliable. It's, yeah. the, it's the key. It's most of the time, it's the key to your self-destruction. Yeah, and that, and that. That's what it is. Mm. Wow. Yeah, we got. We got deep. really deep. <laughs> we got deep like <laughs> Sandusky did. Turtles. Oh people. my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. sighs> Everybody oh, Penn State hates idiots. me. Hey, let's do some asking idiots before we get the fuck out of here. We should have tweeted that. Uh, this is a terrible podcast. No, this is a great podcast. Ah, oh, really? I I felt really happy about it. No, I always say that. You know, the t- the things that you think is the worst all end up being the best. I just like that. I I think we need to be talking Unless about current events more. 
You know? Yeah, but ain't shit going on. You know, everybody's going on. Everybody's either on vacation now. It's summer. Or going on vacation. You know what people are talking about right now? Kim what? Kardashian eating calamari out of Kanye's hand. I can't fathom why. That's how you know nothing Ew. is going on. In Wait, what? Why calamari? Apparently, they had like North's first birthday or whatever. And the fact that I know this cause is proof that nothing is going on because I don't feed into the Kimye stuff. But apparently, she ate calamari out of his hand at a restaurant. Everyone's like, they're so in love. It's proved their love. FYI, North has to be a fairy. A fairy? You ever seen True Blood? North is growing up too fast. North is 16. <laughs> Uh, also, okay. she ate uh, cum out of Ray J's dick. So, what's the big deal about <laughs> eating? I guess <laughs> eating Kim's calamari out of become. Kanye's hand. <laughs> Why is that more? If filthy? y'all think that is love, then what was she with Ray J? Then? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Shit. This is how you could tell millennials. A millennial just put on Twitter. Her name is Vanessa Scrite at Van Scrite. She goes, "The BT Awards picked Chris Rock to host. They could have picked better at Little Duval, at CD God, <laughs> at T Ray Davis. Snowball. They picked a." Uh, the right person. Not well, all millennials all right. are ignorant. We, we got an ask an idiot. All right, let's go. Um, uh, <laughs> Rone Badamisi wants to know, would you fuck a, and he said retarded chick. Retarded is not a politically correct word. So we'll say mentally challenged chick for $1 million. What? Very interesting being that uh, Greg Schultz, Andrew Schultz's brother, is standing right here because he actually had sex with a retarded girl. He told me. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> Hold on. Can you also get... send mentally challenged no, no, no. sex. Can we get this on mic? Can, we... can you tell the story, Greg? Can you come tell here, the story? Greg. Come on, come Greg. Here. Come on. Lean in the page. Lean it. Split. Get in the mic. Talk in the mic. Split the seat with Paige. Split the seat with Paige. There's no Tell us about the time you had sex with a mentally challenged girl. Right, this is Greg Schultz. This you is my brother. You had sex with a mentally challenged girl? Get into the mic. Talk into the mic. I just, uh, I just, oh, God. <laughs> no, just talk. Greg. I was just, I was at college at, like, an alumni thing. Event. Yeah. And uh, I was I was just in the club with my friends, and I did not have sex with this girl at all. <laughs> just, okay. Just but, tell us but, but, uh, thank God I'm editing this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Go. But, no, nah, I, I saw her from the back, and my friend danced with her friend, and I just, I, I came in, I started grinding she with her. She had a fat ass. She did have a fat ass, and... All jokes aside, in Mount's Corner, South Carolina, all the girls that were in, like, the mentally challenged classes had fat asses, yo. Trauma. They did. <laughs> when going to Berkeley High School, they did. Fat asses and big breasts. Continue. And, uh, I guess, like... I didn't. I didn't see her face, but I was dancing with her from the back, and then I ended up like making out with her, and she was in the club. You didn't see her face while you were making out with her. I, I like kind of like came in. I put my cheek next to her cheek, <laughs> <laughs> and then I made out with her. Let me ask you: When she was doing that, was she saying like ice cream? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh no, no. But then when when she started talking to me, I could tell she had like a little bit of Down syndrome, and, a little and bit I don't know if there syndrome? is a little bit of Down syndrome, Greg. I don't think you get a drop of. No, Down no. Like syndrome. she had the she had the face, you know. So she like looked the, like she was related to all those other ones. She, yeah, and 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 that's the point. I was like, damn, like I made a little bit of a mistake over here. <laughs> Why would they have her in the How, club? Was she a good kisser? She <laughs> was a good kisser. <laughs> <laughs> Round of applause for Greg Schultz. Right, Greg Schultz. The <laughs> that's, that's a, you're a hell of a guy, Greg. Yo, man. Yeah, you are a good dude for doing that. Uh, at Edwo Angelo. <laughs> you said, never answered you. the question, though. Wait, what was what? the question? Would you fuck a retarded would girl for a million? No, absolutely wouldn't take advantage of that poor girl. Listen, if what her... If she wanted what, it? What, if, what if her vagina was as strong as her, her hands? Oh okay. <laughs> at Edwo Angelo <laughs> wants to know, is it okay to hit a woman if she cheats? No. I think girls. I this is something I always. I have a twin brother. Like I've always been treated the same way as my brother. You know what I mean? Like if I hit my brother and my brother turned around and hit me, my parents wouldn't be like, "Now don't hit her because she's a girl." Like if if you deserve to get hit just because it's a girl, like I agree with you, but there has to be deserve. I don't yeah. think you should deserve to get hit for cheating. Just like I don't think a dude deserves to get hit for, for cheating. cheating. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't do that. You can learn from the guy that, that uh, fucked Leonardo DiCaprio. That Leonardo DiCaprio fucked his girl. Yeah, if you cheat, honestly, if you get cheated on, just kill yourself. You know what I mean? Don't, like, don't, it's not worth it. It's not it. funny. It's not don't worth it. Over it. Don't hit your boyfriend. <laughs> just shoot yourself. Yeah, don't take it out on her. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're the one in pain. She's fine. <laughs> <laughs> get rid of that pain. <laughs> we're, we're not making fun of suicide here in the building. No. We're making okay. fun of the guy that killed himself. Now, um, at Unethical says, how exactly do you suck a fart out of, out of an ass? 
That's a great question. It's easy. It's like a bong hit. If you ever took a hit out of a bong, you could take a hit out of an asshole. Ugh. Um. Okay. Oh, my God. Paige, have you ever had a fart sucked out of your ass? No. Absolutely not. Well, you're only 21. You got plenty of time for that. <laughs> okay. Uh, This guy said, motherfucking Evan said- this is a good one. Why do girls feel like if all they bring, why do girls feel like if all they br- all they are bring is vagina to the table, <laughs> they deserve this amazing, tall, built, god-like man? Go, Paige. <laughs> all you're bringing is pussy to the table. But, uh, I mean. Well, c- clearly, he is not bringing grammar to the table. Yeah, obviously. Um, I mean. Huh? Huh? That was a they- good one, huh, guys? <laughs> that, one, that one was a funny one. Okay. <laughs> go, 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 Paige. If. The question is, if all they bring to the table is vagina, why do they think they deserve a god? Is that what he's saying? Yes, why do they think they deserve a good man if all they got is pussy? Well, yeah. I mean, I don't. that's obviously, they have a weird sense of entitlement then. I don't think if you that's all you can bring to the table, you should expect that at all. You should at least, and one, you should hopefully bring like a sense of humor or something to the yeah. table. Something else Look. to the table. Good hair, maybe. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> I've laughed something. at a lot of jokes and they felt really good. Yeah. I've never came from a joke. You've never came from a joke? I've never came from conversation. Mm-hmm. Pussy. <laughs> well, makes but I'm saying come. it adds on to it. Yeah, it adds it does, on to it, it but I'm saying- But you can't expect, like, you can't expect the best of the best if you, there's nothing else that you're adding on to it when they could just get vagina from anywhere. Agree, but my point is, if all you're offering is dick to this person, all right. she needs to offer is vagina. If right. you guys want a relationship, then she got to offer relationships. Yeah, right. but I can't even fuck a girl if I don't have some type of emotional Because you're grown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. You used to be able to get your dick stuck when you are eight by your fucking cousin. Well, she was doing. She wasn't like no having really heartfelt conversations with Actually, you. Actually, she was. I was eight. <laughs> she was babysitting me. And really? Yes, my, it was my cousin's ex-wife. She was family. We used to talk. You know? <laughs> oh, really? What yes. did you guys talk about? Her stories that were on, like Guiding Light and Days of Our Lives. I would ask her why she watches those things. And she was like, don't worry, but when this goes off, I'm going to let you watch something else. And then she would take me in the goddamn room and have me suck her titties. <laughs> she would make you wait for the soap opera to, to finish. finish. That's right. She had her priorities all the way in order. I'm going to watch these soaps and I'm going to motherfucking be a pedophile okay <laughs> Leonard get in the other room get in the other fucking room I'm watching days of our lives absolutely <laughs> I don't like it, Like I, I need conversation because you know why because as a man you never know what could come of fucking a girl you could end up getting her pregnant you could end up getting a, yeah. getting a STD. Who the fuck wants to catch gonorrhea from some chick you don't even like I mean and some people you can't usually... even talk to That's you'd be right. mad as fuck at yourself that's true, yeah. man. And P- generally speaking, people are p- pretty, like, the way they are personality is, is often how they are in bed. So yes. if you're boring, and it's not going to be. I want to get gonorrhea from somebody I can talk to them about it afterwards. I want to get Like, you know you gave me gonorrhea? You don't think, wait, you wouldn't talk to the person who gave you gonorrhea no matter what? Hell no, I'm not going to admit that shit. Ah. I'm going to take that out. That's, that's <laughs> a good one. How about this? Uh, Eki Shades uh, says... I feel I'm the only guy that can bust multiple nuts in one session when having sex and still keep going. Am I God? Damn. Am that, I God? You got that AK-47 am dick. You got that chopper cock. <laughs> you just like, that, mach- that machine gun meat. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, hilarious. How old are you? Machine 16? gun meat. <laughs> you aren't. Oh, fuck. How old are you, dude? Oh, I think you're a girl. Yeah, that's, I think, that sounds I think weird. That's that sounds a little off. I can't imagine you can stay hard and bust another nut. I, I know, need some no sort help. of like, you know, um, recovery time. It's just exhausting. No, I can deal. Sounds with, I, can, I have the physical stamina to do it, but my penis just. Does that's what not, I'm saying. Oh, okay, it's exhausting <laughs> to keep pumping. Or yeah. Like that. God, have I'm you one, ever done that? I'm, I'm, not now. You're the one hitter quitter. I'm 33. I'm about to be 34. I can't fucking bust no multiple nut. Yeah. Oh, I can't. Yeah. I'm a one hitter yeah. fucking quitter, dog. I'm not a 12 round boxer. Hell no. I got a knockout punch. If that don't work. Listen. I mean, it's an age thing. How old is he? He's probably really young. I don't know. Because I feel like most of the guys my age too are like that. Wait, they can have sex and then have sex right again? Yeah. Really? I got a hot hour. <laughs> hey, that's Time my up. set. I got Time a, on the clock. I, I got a hot fucking hour. I give hour, you this dog. headliner dick. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. No, You're no, going to no. get headline dick, yeah. and if you don't come by the end of it, Absolutely. hey, the and, club is closed. And this hour includes <laughs> foreplay. Foreplay is my opening act. And then, and, and then we're going to get into the set. All Listen, right? when them checks come. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to like this hour, though. You're going to leave here satisfied and pleased. Like, yo, that was a hot hour. I'll be back next week. Simple and you need plenty. a week recovery time? 
All right, it's time to get the fuck about here, though. We All right, man. We this long enough. We prolonged this long enough. We definitely did. We this stretched was... it just like Sandusky. Oh, I can't believe... my gosh. <laughs> I can't believe we made it to almost Everyone 80 minutes. We did it, man. This is the worst podcast ever. This yeah, is... Stop it. I am very I take proud offense to of that. this podcast. I think Paige no, did a wonderful you, job. No, Paige. Listen. Oh, so who's it because of It's because of us. <laughs> no. I, I think... feel like we averaged 30 and 10. Today was a 20 and 8 game. My own Maybe flesh and stop blood, about LeBron. my own brother talked about hooking up with a, a retarded, retarded f- female. Greg came off the bench to give us 30. You did. You did pull a <laughs> Jamal Crawford. Greg, you, yes. you gave us Greg, Jamal Crawford. Greg, Greg is Greg. six man of the year. Greg you, James. Six man. I did not have sex with he did not have sexual relations with that woman. Say it to the mic, Greg. I did not get down with the girl did, with Down I did not syndrome. have sex with this girl. No, did, clarify listen, that. you did finger her. No way. I realized she was a little out of it. She was Touching me a little. <laughs> <laughs> she was petting him. She was petting him. This is a really nice material. Stop it. What type of material? Uh, I, saw that. I, was, I backed off. I backed off. Listen, you're a good man. You're a better man than most, Greg. Paige, you got anything you want to plug, boo? Uh, no, just uh, watch Revolt TV. Find me on Revolt TV. You and, fucking oh, Twitter. And, yeah, go to my Twitter because my Twitter is awful. At front page with two E's. And your Instagram? Page E. O'Donnell. It's my full name. That Paige is, has huge 21-year-old tits, ladies and gentlemen. This is not true. What size boobs are you? Boobs are, I'm a C. C is uh, no. regular. That's regular? Yeah, yeah that's regular. average, I feel They like. look big to me. I mean, I think she pushes them up. boobs. Oh. Yeah. They're not that big. They're just perky. You're 21. That perkiness will go away sooner than later. Schultz. Neg him. Neg him. Neg him. Charlamagne with the neg. <laughs> Is that anything you want to pay, Schultz? Uh, yeah. Uh, page? Page? No, you want to page? Plug. Pay, plug. Do I want to plug? Uh, want to plug first page? of all, <laughs> that page, that was a great plug. What? You know, what you just did. That was absolutely exceptional. Oh, okay, that thanks. was a Sandusky-esque plug. Oh my gosh, no, don't. Okay. Don't do that. No more Sandusky <laughs> jokes? Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be, uh, me and Carly Aquilino, again, are going to be in Chicago uh, oh, in July, the, I think the last weekend of July, so we're going to be headlining out there. We got the Foxwood show, obviously, yeah. in August. Make World sure. Star Hip Hop Show. August World Star Hip Hop Show. Uh, August 23rd, is it? Oh, shit. Not exactly sure. Oh, wow. And then uh, oh, we just shot a sketch that is absolutely hilarious. We shot a few sketches, uh, and I want you guys to check it out. It's going to be coming out this week. We're almost done editing it. So me and Let's Charlamagne. Let's sell it. It could be whack or something. Oh, that's right. He, uh, yeah, yeah, you got low expectations. So uh, we're going to be putting that out. And then, um, yeah, I'm, I perform every night in New York City. So if you're in New York City and you want to come see me at a comedy club, you know, just shoot me a tweet or just check your local comedy club listings, and uh, you'll see where I'm at. I can't find a fucking flyer for the a world. Star I show. think it's the twenty third of August. Twenty third of August. But uh, what about you, man? We'll figure it out. <laughs> I, 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 listen, man, I don't have anything. I'm getting the fuck out of here, and uh, I'm going to try to do better next week. But I do want to answer this guy's question. The Magic Man's rant. He says, "How do you come back from getting beat up in front of your girlfriend?" Oof. You don't. <laughs> Can't. It's a wrap. I you almost can't. got in a fight the other night. Well, you hope you you, you better did? not have gotten beat yeah, up. Yeah, this guy with Sarah. Really? Oh. Yeah, dude. This dude. This dude was looking at Sarah crazy on the street and I said you good man and he was like oh yeah you're gonna be tough guy like he was kind of like hipstery guy with like yeah. a one speed bicycle and like a beard <laughs> and uh, you're gonna be tough guy whatever like that and I was like I was like I was like you know just you know respect the respect the, my lady you know what I mean don't fucking look at her like she's not yours to yeah. look at she's not a fucking piece of meat she's a human being yeah. that's what he said she was she's a woman on the street I was like yeah you Holy don't just shit. get to fucking look at a woman on the street she's, she's not a piece of me, meat technically though exactly so she not some gyro <laughs> <laughs> she ain't a shish kebab <laughs> You know, <laughs> Rafiki did not make her. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? So, so then uh, I, I, you know, I kind of, you know, I shut him down. I guess verbally, he felt a little offended that I, and probably in front of my girl. Yeah. So he he starts walking with us, and he has his bike and start walking with us. And I'm like, man, you're fucking losers. Go home and jerk off, you fucking lame, right? And uh, he goes, all right, fine, you go home with your bitch. Uh-oh. Holy shit. So I fucking, I'm usually a calm dude, but, you know, I, I, I fucking lost it. So I rolled up on this dude. I fucking shove him, right? He didn't do shit, so I roll up on again. I shove. He puts down the bike. I fucking shove him again. Let's go, motherfucker. He's like, he's like, oh, I wasn't saying that she's a. B- I don't know what you're talking about. This, that's the other. Then I was like, you fucking fake pussy, motherfucker. Sarah fucked the shit out you that night, didn't she? Absolutely. <laughs> Holy shit, so close. superhero shows. God damn it. Holy shit. I'm gonna die about this pussy. I'm gonna die about mine. God damn. Show. She's like, just lay down, baby. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. All right. Schultz comes back to score 30. <laughs> well, as always, if you listen to this podcast and you learn something uh, and you think we're brilliant, you're right. 
if you listen to this podcast and you think that it sucks, August twenty third. August twenty third. Yeah. Okay. And you, August twenty third is the World Star Hip Hop Show at Foxwood Casino. But if you learn something and you think what you didn't learn anything, and you, let me start over. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you listen to this podcast and you think that uh, we're brilliant and you absolutely learned something, uh, you're right. If you listen to this podcast and you didn't learn anything and you think we don't know what the fuck we're talking about and you think we're idiots, uh, you're right too. This has been the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you.